The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome everyone to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Today we have John and Pete from Pilgrim Terrace. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks for having us on. Thank so you. So glad Appreciate you're here. It. And I have to say, I don't know a lot about Pilgrim Terrace, so I am just going to be hanging on your mm -hmm. every word. So why don't you tell us about... Well, a lot of people don't know about Pilgrim Terrace. Uh, okay, I don't feel so bad. Yeah, I don't, you shouldn't. Um, it's it's a, a little place tucked away on Modoc Boulevard that was donated. The land was donated by the city of Santa Barbara. Oh. In 1981, uh, the Department of uh, Housing and Urban Development stepped in and built uh, the affordable housing community there. Oh. So uh, after the first year, the residents all got together and formed a nonprofit to oversee management because they wanted control over their own community. How smart. Very. Yes. Now, when was this? This was in 1982. 19, I thought that's Jennifer what you Bigelow said. was uh, one of the wow. instrumental people in, in helping them form the nonprofit. Um, I came on the scene on, in 2001. They uh, found me through a newspaper article about my wife and I as local heroes in the independent newspaper. Oh. They hunted me down like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> they really did. And uh, asked for my help. Uh, the, the property was in disarray. It was ill repair, 20 years of deferred maintenance. And um, what happened from then was just magic. I knew that I had to quit my job in Los Angeles. I had 1,200 units in Los Angeles I was responsible for. I, I stopped working. Uh, for a major uh, company down there who actually did nothing but affordable housing. I was a certified oh. management agent for HUD. Oh, so, so you I took were already on, working in yeah, the field. Okay, yeah. got it. So I took on the job, um, and uh, the first thing I had to do is, was fix the property. Uh, and the reason for that is because there was so much unhappiness there. Mm. Um, the seniors were miserable. Oh. Um, and it, like I said, they needed a place they needed to be proud to live in before yeah. I could start working on uh, getting them to love me. It took a long time to get them to love me. <laughs> I find We're that a little hard to that. believe. <laughs> we hated, they hated me at first, but that's okay. That's okay because they had the right to do that because they've been mistreated, I believe. Yeah. So we did a, a major renovation because the city of Santa Barbara <clears throat> uh, saw and listened to what I had to say. They came up and gave us the single largest grant in the history to one property oh, in gosh. Santa Barbara of seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Well, congratulations! Thank you. Gee yes. whiz! And we rehabilitated the entire property with the seven hundred and fifty thousand. But the story gets even better. Much better. I yes. And bigger. <laughs> I didn't feel that we should warehouse our mothers and fathers just to die. Mm. And I think that's what we do in this country. Mm -hmm. I'm very passionate about it. Uh, our senior citizens are one of the most important, important elements of our society. Without our senior citizens teaching the lessons of hard work and reward, mm -hmm. the lessons of consequence for action, uh, our children are missing all of that yes. because we in this country have put our moms and dads aside, we've diminished them. In many ways, we put them aside, they, they're not important anymore, mm -hmm. which is not true. They're the most important part of our society. Gosh. So I, wa I went on a, a, a quest. Uh, I started reading a lot about nutrition. I found out that all we need after 65 years of age is one nutri nutritional meal a day. Just one, because our metabolism slow down. Hmm. And when they slow down, we only need that one nutritional meal a day. So what I did is start working towards the end of selling the property, taking on a partner. Oh. I found a partner in Irvine, 
uh, with a heart. There's very hard to find people in this industry with a heart. And that was Ken Reiner with Reiner Communities. Mm -hmm. uh, I found him and uh, we purchased the property together. The nonprofit now owns 1% of the property. Ken wow. Reiner owns the other one. And we started on our quest to look for Pete. That guy. And uh, I oh. called, uh, what I did is I called the Julia Childs Foundation, and I kind of had a lot of fun with it because I loved Julia Childs, always did. So I did her voice, and I called and asked for a he chef. too. <laughs> so Pete, you're the chef. Yes. Yes. So John had reached out to me back, I think it was around 2013, originally, just to run some things by me and ask questions and just general conversation about food, nutrition, kitchen, how it gets done. And, you know, I ended up doing, I don't know, two or three events, uh, like a Christmas thing. Uh, we did an Italian meal one day and I think it was a Thanksgiving meal because John had done about 18 of them on his own. I cooked, uh, <laughs> yeah, eight turkeys, yeah. eight turkeys every year for the residents. And so some time went by and um, I put together how to do scheduling, how to make menus, you know, equipment lists, just a general outline of how to put together a kitchen to do uh -huh. some form of a nutrition program. Let it be kids, seniors, whoever. Mm -hmm. And the remodel wasn't done yet. So for me, I, didn't, I saw his vision, but I didn't see the big vision because I couldn't picture it. You needed a kitchen. So some time went by and um, I was, had quit my corporate chef job and I was just solely working by myself catering. And John called out of the blue in, towards the end of 2015 and said, you should come look at everything. And I went, oh, wow, okay. Had no idea. So were you in Santa Barbara at yeah, that time? Yeah, I've been oh, in Santa okay, Barbara okay. since 85. Okay, okay. So I drove over and I pulled in and I, before I even got to John or inside the building, it was completely re-landscaped, big, beautiful park. All the buildings, the, you know, the, the we'll call them apartments, the one and two bedrooms, uh -huh, uh -huh. all repainted, done, windows. I, it was gorgeous. And the center where the nutrition program is and basically the social center is, mm -hmm. I, for better words, better use of words, it was kind of 60s Brady Bunch. Ah, yeah. Now it turned into like a mid-level entrance to a hotel. Yeah. Slate, marble, beautiful. Wow. Beautiful sideboards, tables, lighting. And you did lighting. all that. Well, I, I had something to do with yeah. it. Yeah, and so I walked in and saw it and I went, oh, you, you guys really did this. So we went and looked in the kitchen and it wasn't, it was done, but not quite done. And I was really blown away by it. And so he asked if I had interest and that he was, that was it. History. And for yeah. me personally as a chef, because I've done lots of cooking and a lot of high end cooking, um, probably the most rewarding thing I've ever done is on a day-to-day -day basis is, be, is overseeing that and producing and working with everybody and having a good time and watching the change in people. Yeah. And, yeah, and re just to rewind, um, Reiner, our partner, and uh, ourselves put $5.2 million more into the property. Yeah. Wow. For all of the That's where all that happened. They so did a $5 million dollar remodel. Uh, we have 84 units and 92 residents. Yeah. I call them souls, though. We have 90, 92 souls. Oh. But to see the difference between then and now. Oh, it's day and night. It's night and day. I mean, literally day and night. We have vibrant, engaged, healthy, healthy, wonderful senior citizens that are actually part of the community. They are, they, they've grown together to such an extent that you, you can hardly tell them apart anymore. <laughs> you can't. Well, and the thing was is I had spent some time in there years previous and watched the dysfunction oh. between people, the, 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 oh. the sewing circle, you know, yeah. the backstabbing and the, the little rumors. And you just was, it seemed like I was in the, you know, seventh grade okay. watching kids Peyton fighting. Yeah. And as we started the lunch program, you know, we didn't really know how it was going to be taken because um, you just don't know. It just 
within the first week it took off and that was it and almost anybody who could get out of their house and make it in there was in there wow. and if they couldn't yeah. we delivered to and them. here's what we did we made the entrees from 11.30 to 2.30, so I told them, if you don't like your neighbor, you don't come at the same time they do. But now... Because they have a preference, they, right? <laughs> that whole thing has turned into a social yeah. scene. So a lot of times people will sit in there from 11.30 to 12.30, 1.30, even 2.30. We've got art classes, mm. seated and standard yoga, stretching, dance. Yes. Holy cow. No one was doing these things on a consistent basis right, because right. their health wasn't... They mm. weren't feeling good. Yeah. Now... It's like we took 10 years off their lives. God. It's awesome. Yeah. So, it, John, it really you're a board is. member? I'm on the board. I'm okay. the founder and chair now. Founder and chair. Yeah, I was. Chef. Yes, chef. Yep. Uh, chef Hart. He's part of the heart <laughs> that, uh, of the whole organization. We have such wonderful people. We're a very small clan of people, very low administrative overhead because I realized that uh, I'm a nonprofit. Yeah. That means that our money is not our money. It belongs to every man, woman, and child in this city. And what we set out to do was absolutely amazing. What we've done so far is unbelievable. People can't believe yeah. what we've accomplished in such a short a time. But the miracle is this. I called all 90 residents together after the sale of the property. Now, I protected the property for another 55 years, so it can never be anything but affordable oh, housing yeah. for 62 plus and or disabled. But I, I, I went one step further. It was their property, it wasn't mine. Mm -hmm. So we called a, a general vote. Uh, we had 87 of the residents that, uh, that came mm -hmm. to the meeting. They voted unanimously to form a foundation to give back Oh, yes. that's where the foundation comes to in. To Santa Barbara. I love it. So we do a lot of giving, <laughs> to say the least. Gosh. And it's trickling back now. Yeah. Now, is. when did that happen exactly? That happened in 2015. Yeah. So just recently. So that's, we, this whole thing came together literally January 1st, 2015. By February 1st of 2015, Doors were open, meals were being made, and we've never looked back. Wow, we're that's doing over six, 600 meals a About week now. Yeah. Over 30,000 meals every year. year okay. Uh, we've distributed because we've partnered with the organic farmers, Tutti Frutti Farms, one of the oldest organic farms on the West Coast, mm -hmm. established by her fa family owned. We decided to start filling deficiencies that we found in our strategic plan. Santa Barbara is number 47th out of 58 counties for food distribution. Not good. No, that's no, not. When not we live in one of the most beautiful, <laughs> bountiful places, right. it's kind of mind-blowing to understand that we're 39% of the community in the county is, doesn't know where their next meal is coming from. You wouldn't yeah. think that when you stand outside and no, look at the no. mountains and ocean, no. but it's true. Jeez. It is. So we have Tutti Frutti Farms. But they're all part of another bigger veggie rescue. Veggie rescue that veggie rescue oh, yeah, from I know the Orphala Foundation. Wonderful organization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and uh, you know we have over twenty partners that we've. Oh, that's so great! So gotten. you collaborate, collaborate, oh, yeah. collaborate. That's yeah. what we need to do as smaller nonprofits mm -hmm. because there are so many nonprofits in our community, and we have more nonprofits per capita than anywhere else. Mm -hmm. All right, so they're all vying for the same dollars. The problem is those dollars are drying up because once when the foundation had $100 million and they were getting 5% on a return, they were distributing big grants and helping nonprofits. But now they only get a point and a half. So when they go down to one and a half points on their uh, asset, what happens is all nonprofits suffer mm -hmm. because the non foundations don't have enough money. Yeah. So the grants get smaller and smaller and smaller. So what we need to do as a community <laughs> is, first of all, private citizens, look very carefully on who you give your money to oh, yeah. and what they're doing. Yep. Yep. All right? There are so many nonprofits that are non You didn't know about us. We served over 100,000 pounds of food yeah. last year That's alone. That's a lot of food. Served and distributed food. and redistributed through Veggie Rescue and other farms. Gosh, okay. And this is food, yeah, this food, is food that heart. would normally, 45% uh, of our food in this country is thrown away because it doesn't look good. Well, what you happens? guys are doing I'd be thrown work. away. I don't look good. <laughs> <laughs>
I tried well, you to, guys but are doing great work. My shoulder was out and I couldn't toss him. <laughs> thank you for being Darn here. It. And thank you for all the good work you're doing, for having such a fun see, time doing it. See, but you need to come over yes. and have lunch and see what yes, it's all you about. Do. Right. Because you, you will love that. it. And thank you, everyone, for being with us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.